Hello and welcome. This is James from the DSO Imager channel. Uh, tonight I'm going to show you the image processing workflow that I use to finish this uh, picture of the Eagle Nebula, also known as M16. Now I've pretty much hit M16 every year for the past, I don't know, five or six years now with various scopes and uh, camera combinations. Uh, I posted a video two years ago on my channel where I showed most of the pictures I've taken in that time and also um, the I did shoot um, about 10 hours worth with the uh, Celestron Edge HD8 and the uh, ASI 294 Mono. Uh, ever since that shot and I think I mentioned it in the video that uh, I've wanted to get more data on this target so this year we had a rare string of clear nights and I decided to spend uh, that whole time collecting data with this uh, scope. So I picked up another 27 hours give or take and uh, I actually used the data that I collected two, uh, two years ago combined it with the data that I collected this year and uh, ended up with 37 hours worth of total integration. Now the rotation wasn't an exact match and I did have to crop this a decent amount to get everything to uh, fit, but um, I think it came out pretty good. So let's take a look here. Uh, what you're seeing right here is the integration for hydrogen, oxygen, and sulfur here. This is the combined data from, from this year and from two years ago. Uh, and this is just auto stretch, right? Nothing. Uh, no processing at all here. And so we'll zoom in and take a quick look at the pillars. Uh, comparing the data, the original data from two years ago and the data f that I took recently, I was surprised at how similar the data looked in that uh, the stars and everything was pretty much the same. So I'm guessing the conditions, the collimation, the, the camera, everything has been consistent, which is uh, nice to know uh, that it's been that consistent over uh, the past couple years. Uh, if we zoom in and look at the corners here, you can see uh, how the rotation was a little bit different. And so this did take some further cropping, uh, but we'll see later on that when I uh, when I cropped this, I had made a mistake. Basically what you see here, this, uh, this area here, uh, I, didn't, I didn't crop this corner out. Somehow I missed this corner here and so uh, I had to clean that up <laughs> after the fact and I'll show how I did that. Alright, uh, let's take a look here. So this is uh, putting the channels together using the LRGB combination tool. Uh, I'm using the standard Hubble palette so that is the sulfur in red, the hydrogen in green, and the oxygen in blue. And what you're seeing here is an unlinked auto stretch uh, from the screen, screen transfer function tool. So we're still linear and uh, here's the crop uh, that I did to get rid of all those uh, artifacts. Um, unbeknownst to me at the time. Can you see it? That's why I missed it, I think. It's it's barely noticeable. This this bottom corner here though definitely has more blue. But at this stage I wasn't aware. I mean yeah, zoomed out it, it doesn't stand out. Okay, so next was uh, Blur Exterminator. Now you'll notice I skipped a step. There's no DBE on here. So I ended up not going with dynamic background extraction. Uh, I tried a couple different settings with it and a couple of different reference points and I just did not like the results I was uh, getting. It, it just, it made the, uh, it was too harsh. The contrast was too strong. And uh, I even gave uh, automatic background extraction a try and that didn't really help me anyway. And I mean, looking at this, with narrow band, you tend not to get a gradient, so there really there really wasn't any gradient to remove here, I didn't think. And so I decided to proceed without uh, without that typical step. All right, uh, so next I took the stars out. 
using star exterminator and uh, here's our stars so that's there we go and then next I stretched it so here we finally do our first stretch um, and all I did for the stretch is I used the um, the uh, unlinked auto stretch from the STF tool and applied that using the histogram uh, transform tool. Now I know I am late to the party uh, with the generalized hyperbolic stretch and I did play around with this. I watched uh, Adam Block's video that he posted recently on this and yeah I can really see the value on this and I thought uh, that this would do a good job of managing the brightness of the core but I, I couldn't quite get it to work uh, maybe it was because I was trying this on a color image um, but I did end up using it after this initial stretch um, and it did pretty good but I definitely need to do some more work with this I can see this being really useful for like galaxy images or LRGB type images but with narrow band, I'm not so sure. Uh, if you guys are using uh, generalized hyperbolic stretch with narrow band images, let me know and, and let me know what your techniques are. All right, so I think this is actually where you see me using it right here, right? So I wanted to get more contrast in the background, but uh, I was using the um, protect highlights uh, option to keep this from getting uh, impacted by these changes I was making in the background and I thought that was doing a pretty good job now you can see I put a mask in place uh, to do some more focused work in this area uh, whenever you see a preview box right that's telling you that <laughs> uh, the area that I'm focusing on and now doing some more work back here and so <laughs> now this is pretty funny so notice this corner is now becoming more noticeable and at some point I noticed it I think when it became most noticeable is when I created this next mask because you can see it very clearly right there and that's what I realized I had a, a little bit of a problem there uh, this inverting here is me trying to deal with maybe some of this uh, magenta that's in the background yeah, this purple here. So yeah, you can see more of that purple is removed. There's a little bit. I decided to keep a little bit in there. Uh, by getting rid of all of it, it made the it made the overall picture too uh, too two dimensional, right? It was too bicolor. I'm just I'm not a fan of the of the two toned bicolor. I mean the blue and golds. They look kind of nice, but the gold sometimes get more of a brown, and then it's like a blue and a brown. Um, you know, I like that blue and brown combination when we're talking about camouflage on a British World War II desert tank. <laughs> but in, in my narrowband images, I'm not, not too crazy about that color combination. All right, so doing some work on the core there. And got to this stage and decided to move over to a new workspace to tackle uh, this issue down here. Okay, so now yeah, you see I've got preview boxes down here, and you can see it pretty clearly here the the difference here. So I felt I needed to do something uh, to take care of that. I couldn't just leave it like that, and I used a mask, and you can see there's a mask applied right now, and that looks pretty pretty good. So what I did was I created a range mask. And, and I remembered from the previous step that I noticed this this area right here. So this basically, this range mask gave me the line that I needed uh, to make a, an appropriate mask. So I took this in the Photoshop and modified it and created this right here. So this mask now perfectly fits that area. And then it was just a matter of curves. And really, all I did is I just dialed back on uh, blue just a little bit. And there, gone. I mean, 
if you really look tight you can still see it but it is far less noticeable and now we're just doing regular curves work I'm proceeding with regular work uh, let's leave the mask on there yeah uh, wanting to um, add a little bit of red and so what I'm doing here is increasing the red on these orange areas, these, these initial yellow areas, increasing the red and pulling back on green. And that gives us a little bit more of a reddish. I guess I wasn't really trying to go for red, more of a, a gold color there. All right. If if you've been following me for a while, you know that I like green in the uh, in the Hubble palette images. And I'm really trying hard to preserve the green uh, that I have up in this area and leave hints behind here. So the whole time I'm working on curves and everything, this green being left behind is, is totally intentional. Uh, and the purple and magenta that's in here, I'm actually not minding. The, the purple may be a touch strong, uh, but really I think it's, it's creating a very colorful image, uh, which is what I like. So doing some work on the blues there. Uh, yeah, I think I used the um, uh, the uh, dark uh, structure enhanced script to kind of get a little bit more contrast on the uh, pillars and these other darker areas. All these little Bach globules that we have all over the place. Right, I mean, this is where all the real star creation is going on, right? Is inside these little tiny Bach globules. They look amazing on the Hubble shot. Uh, so I was just happy to pick some of them up. I can't resolve all of them with my little 8-inch scope. All right, so I got to this stage, and it was time to uh, work on the stars. You can see them right here. This is actually where I ended up. Let me uh, backtrack a bit. Okay, so unstretched. Uh, as usual, I start with the arc sine H stretch, which uh, I think does a nice job of maintaining color in the core of these larger stars, which is always a goal. Uh, then I used a regular histogram stretch. Uh, now I'm putting a mask here, and the, the whole reason behind this is that these stars are already fairly large and in particular this is some of the stars that are right around uh, the, pi the pillars and if the stars get too bright around the pillars then they completely obscure all this nice detail yet I'm wanting to pull out some of the really small stars out there so um, that's what I'm using as a mask here. Now, my understanding is that Bill Blanchin and uh, I forgot the name of the other guy, they're working on a script uh, that's supposed to um, uh, control this, <laughs> do a better job of masking the brighter stars. So I'm really looking forward to that uh, when that comes out. But for now, I just used a game mask and just made a general um, mask kind of a kind of a wide field I mean wide field kind of a wide area I'm being a little sloppy here to be honest but I didn't think it'd matter but the idea is to keep some of these brighter stars from growing too big I know it's impacting some small stars in this area as well but I, I think it's just an easy way uh, to control the growth and let me hide the mask so you can see there so you see I was able to pull out a lot of these smaller stars while at the same time controlling the size the growth of these uh, larger stars now I'm increasing saturation uh, now using SCNR tool to remove green now inverting and applying SC, SCNR tool again to remove green while we're inverted so that will take care of the purple stars and here we go almost nearly uh, uh, nearly uh, RGB looking stars. Now uh, you see how this is kind of like a faded orange look. Uh, one trick you can do to get a little bit more color out of these is to invert again and actually increase blue. 
uh, which is blue is the inverse of yellow. So by increasing blue when we're inverted, it's going to add yellow to these stars. And there, I think that's a, a pretty pleasing uh, star color for some of these orange and red stars. And lastly, uh, I had started putting some of these together and I notice I have halos around around these. So I went back to here and uh, what I did this time, let's see, I got a mask on there, is I inverted the mask and then I used curves uh, to pull back on the lighter areas and that took care of the halos there. And I pulled back again because, again, these stars are the ones right around the the pillars, and I don't want, I don't want them to obscure that too much. And so I ended up with I think this here. Now this is getting close to where I want it to be, but I it wasn't quite there. For one thing, the whole image just appeared a little bit too flat. Uh, to me. I wanted more contrast and I wanted to tweak the colors a little bit more and so I took it into Photoshop and here we go. This is what I ended up with. Oh, I also changed the uh, rotation. Now to get to this point in Photoshop, I'll just show really quickly through the history. First thing I went uh, is into the camera raw filter and the main uh, slider I used was the dehaze. Uh, then you can see I came out of camera raw filter. I did some more brightness contrast, tweaking the hues and the saturation. Uh, and <laughs> at this point, I thought I was done. And I even shared this picture on Instagram in this state. And looking at it on Instagram after I posted, it still looked a little bit too flat to me. I, I don't, I mean, looking at it right here on Photoshop on my monitor, it looks okay. So it's just interesting that I shared it on Instagram and uh, it looked a little flat. And so I came right back to Photoshop and I um, made it brighter. It just, it looked dim to me on Instagram. And then back to hue saturation. I think what I was looking at was tweaking Right, we got this purple and magenta in here, so I basically moved the magenta a little bit closer to red. And more tweaks with hue saturation, made it a little bit brighter. Went back to camera raw to increase the saturation, I mean, I contrast a little bit, and here's where I ended up with. Uh, so let's go back to Pixinsight and here we are. So what do you think? Too contrasty maybe? Uh, you know, now that I'm looking at this, maybe the, the pillar is a little bit too bright. You know what? I am probably going to go back and tweak this a little bit more. Although you do have to be careful, right? Because I'm quickly reaching that stage where you can tweak an image forever and never fully be finished with it. <laughs> so anyway, I think for now I'm going to leave it like this. I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts on this, uh, in particular how the processing went, uh, the, the color, and whether or not you think I overdid it with the processing. Uh, is that center column too bright, or did you like any of the previous versions more than this one? All right, so with that, um, don't forget to like and subscribe, and clear skies.